to show you guys a trick I have with the oil pump before you grenade your engine. As usual, things are blowing up at Nick's garage. He's got his mechanics all working hard, and there are tons of jobs in this candy store of a shop. Every intake has a story. Every intake belongs to an engine that I've got here. Like I said, we have a busy season where you got started on it. We've got a few engines going. I'm doing one after another, and everything's going so far so good. Today, one of Nick's customers, Big Al, has smuggled in a little present for the boss. Happy Valentine's. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a 70 TA, just like Nick's real one. Nice. Thank you, uh, Alan. Thanks, man. It's gonna go with my collection. Over the years, Nick has collected a few trophies, a lot of good friends, and plenty of memories. But this is no time to reminisce. There's work to be done. Let's go measure fuel gravity. There you go. 750 exactly. Perfect. We're on the money. So we're going to leave it to We're set at 750 and we're ready to start the run. We're using a, a 94 octane sold through uh, Petro Canada here in Canada, which is a 94 octane, which is a local gas station. And uh, all our clients buy from the Petro Canada, so uh, we're building all the engines with an octane of 94. So we're going to do more and test it with the same fuel and uh, let's see how it goes. The subject of today's test is this beautifully rebuilt 440 that's going into Louis' W100 4x4 truck. Louis wants to run his engine with EFI for easy starts and fuel economy. But Nick has had a lot of luck with carburetors over the years. So he wants to do a test on his dyno and see what the numbers say. And now they at the shop. Here we get this one running with the fuel injection. We're going to make a compression here with the carburetor that we had on before. We have a fuel injection throttle body to put on the engine and then try it out to compare horsepower and torque. So we're going to get it warmed up and start doing a few tests and let's see how it goes. There we go. We're going to read it from inside. Okay, we're going to do an initial cold start on uh, fuel injection. Don't forget, this is something that you will learn on its own and drive. So the longer you drive it, the more it's going to learn. So now we're going to do an initial start and see how it goes. And here now, we're going to start it without touching the gas pedal. Here we go. Nick keeps an eye on the gauges and lets the EFI system do its thing. It's constantly monitoring all kinds of parameters and making adjustments on the fly. For a while, you can almost hear it thinking.
my 50 RPM, and that's what I want to see after it's warmed up. Here we go again. Watch. Oh, God. Eventually, the 440 levels out and the EFI seems to be running smooth. Nick decides to go for a test. Okay, here we are. We're going to make a test with the uh, throttle body injection. And let's see what horsepower we're going to get out of this. Here we go. So when it comes to full throttle, carburetor is the way to go. Don't expect Nick to be pulling the carburetors out of his brother's race cars anytime soon. But for his customers with cruisers, there's still plenty of room for EFI. People drive their cars on the weekends only. Sometimes when you park a car for a week with a carburetor and you want to go start it a week or two weeks later, you want to take it for a cruise or for a drive. You're gonna have to crank, crank, crank to fill up the full bolts to get the carburetor started. On a fuel injection, all you do is turn the key, within a few seconds, bang, it starts. Another successful build. It's time to get this big block off the dyno and make room for some of the many other engines in the shop. Now you're probably wondering what Nick was talking about earlier. He's got a little tip with the oil pump that just might save your engine. In many cases, I bought uh, many aftermarket uh, oil pumps on the big block Mopars. You can see here, this is the suction side of the uh, strainer that sucks the oil into the pump. Here's the pump that's made aftermarket. You see this opening? It's a lot larger than the opening side of the pump here. So in other words, we're restricting oil volume on the pump. Look, we put this like this, and take a good look right in there, deep inside. Look at this. The hole to the body of the oil pump is smaller than the opening on the block. And we do this. It's on the upper side, which is right here. See that? We're gonna open it to about this much to match the opening here. So we're gonna have the full flow of oil working with the pump. So we're gonna take a grinder and we're gonna match as much as best we can. Watch this. Now we're gonna match it as best we can, or just about perfect. Watch this. Let's line it up again. There you go. Let's perfect. look inside, and look at this. Voila. So here's another uh, neat trick from Nick's Garage. Taking a main oil pump body, no matter who makes the uh, oil pump, any manufacturer, you should always take apart the pump, bolt it onto the block temporarily like I just did, just a guide, and line up the hole to see if the body of the oil pump is big enough to the block. In many cases, the hole in the oil pump is a lot smaller than the hole on the block. Now, you have all the volume of the oil you need through this pump. And it's a free tip from Nick. <laughs>